Hi guys, in this video, we're going to learn a basic HTML. This tutorial is meant for people who want to learn how to create basic website using HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. And in this video, we're going to focus on HTML only. And this is ongoing series. After this video, we're going to tackle CSS. Okay, so what is HTML? HTML stands for a hypertext markup language. So this is the most basic building blocks of the websites and it defines the meaning or how you can structure uh, the website or the web content online. So generally it is used to describe our web page appearance and sometimes we are using CSS for presentations, how we style it and we're going to tackle that later on. And hypertext uh, refers to the uh, uh, links how to how we connect websites to one another and We can upload content on the internet by using this link or this link tag to the pages that you created or created for other people and Markup uh, meaning is what HTML tags uh, do to the text inside of them and They mark it as a specific type of text. So this is such includes some elements such as head, title, body, header, and footer elements. So we're going to discuss this later on. So once we write code or uh, HTML tags on our text editor. All right. So since we got the basic theory about HTML, uh, it's time to learn it. And what we need to start is a web browser, a text editor. I always prefer Google Chrome and Visual Studio Code since this is the most popular one and easy to use. You can choose Sublime Notepad++, Atom.io, Mozilla Firefox for the browser or Edge. It's your preference choice. For this tutorial, I'm going to use VS Code. Uh, you can download it for, for free. And this is a compatible for Mac OS, Windows, and Linux. Okay, so once you have that, and let's start uh, writing some HTML. All right, so let's take a closer look about the anatomy of an HTML element. And uh, as you can see, we have an opening and closing tag. The opening tag uh, consists of the name of the element. On our example, is the P tag. And the content is the uh, content of the element, which is uh, I love web development. The closing tag is the, the last uh, tag, which is the same opening tag, except that includes a forward slash before uh, the element of the name. All right, so that's it, guys. So once you have uh, Visual Studio Code installed on your machine, you can create a new file on your desktop. I'm going to name it HTML. And there's two ways to open this file on your machine. First, you can right click and open it using your terminal. On my end, I'm using git bash. So you can enter, type in code, and then space, and then period, enter. So once that, uh, you will, you can open the file or the, the folder which is empty at the moment and this editor is empty at this point so we're going to create a new one uh, called index.html so we are telling the browser that we are creating a a file called uh, .html which is the uh, the extension name all right so uh, once you have that, uh, we can write some HTML. First, we need to declare a uh, doc type HTML. So as you can see, we have a Emmet abbreviation. So I'm using uh, Emmet extensions. So you can install it using um, on your Visual Studio Code. Just type in Emmet. So ELM Emmet. All right, by Max VYZ. <clears throat> so it helps us to uh, create a shortcut. So I'm gonna type in exclamation and then I'm gonna hit tab. So it gives me a, a boilerplate, which is we have a head, a doc type, the HTML, 
and also some uh, meta tag and the title it is included the uh, the, the body um, element as well all right so first let's talk about the HTML HTML element is the root element of the page and the uh, head element is the uh, contain some uh, meta tag information like this and the uh, title has a uh, an element specify a title for HTML page just like on Google Chrome you can see on the top of the, the page uh, there is a, a link or a title text called Google Chrome or Google and also for the body we have uh, define a body tag so the body tag is a documents body and it is a container for all the visible contents on your web page all right so first let's start with uh, with the heading so there are six type of heading so from h1 to h6 and let's uh, put a comment here by pressing control and the uh, forward slash so I'm gonna name it um, heading comments and first let's try to uh, write an h1 so followed by the self uh, closing tag so let's name it this is heading one save that control s and if you are using a, a live server you can right click and open with live server Okay. and as you can see we have this is heading level one and for the document or for the title we can change that for any name you want for your project and for this on my end I'm gonna name it HTML project okay so we have the title and let's copy this five times and now uh, we can change this to H2 up until H6. Alright, so once we save that, it's um, as you can see, we have uh, one, two, three, four, five, and six heading. And by the way, um, H1 heading should be used for main headings, followed by H2, uh, H3, and H4, and so on. Okay, and let's uh, move on and let's try a paragraph. Okay gonna put a comment so we have we can uh, organize our text so for the uh, paragraph we can uh, make doing this by defining the p tag all right so let's this is a paragraph and by the way I'm, ga I'm gonna teach you how to include a lorem ipsum uh, random text on Emmet you can type in lorem and as you can see we have an a uh, Emmet abbreviation and you, you can type in any uh, random uh, numbers you want. On my end, I'm gonna use lorem15 and then I'm gonna hit tab for that one. As you can see, we uh, Emmet provide us a uh, quick boilerplate and we can save that. As you can see, we have a, uh, I think more than 15 characters, okay? So that's how uh, paragraph works by defining the p tag and next we have a links and then uh, we can put a comment again here by pressing control and forward slash so let's type in links and for for the links is by the way links is a destination or by specifying the uh, using the href attribute 
So this attribute provides additional information on the elements or HTML elements. And by <coughs> doing so is let's provide an anchor tag or a tag for providing an href attribute. Let's say we want a HTTPS colon forward slash forward slash google.com and let's name it Google save that and as you can see we have now a uh, Google link okay by default it is colored blue and also we can nest a um, uh, an anchor element within the paragraph okay let's say for example we have um, a p tag here and uh, between them uh, we can also um, create a nest element let's say for example we have a text here here's a and then the a tag let's provide this a uh, target attribute by giving it a blank so it go to the uh, outside of the page let's say um, give an example again an HTTPS uh, google.com website okay close that and now we can see say um, link to Google okay and as you can see we, we can nest um, uh, a, a paragraph inside of the paragraph by uh, using this nest anchor element within the paragraph so once we hit this you can go to the uh, google.com okay all right um we can also uh, provide an image for for html so html uh, defines a image image tag or img tag Let's say we have uh, an IMG and uh, it gives a, a, a source attribute and I already provide a I have a file uh, an image of uh, two puppies okay and uh, let's uh, get that by uh, saying forward slash and then it point us on our directory as well so I'm I name it cutedog.jpg and we can provide an alt attribute so it also required if you are uh, creating an image or IMG tag so you need to specify this because if the image for some reason cannot be displayed uh, this can be due to slow connections or some error the source attribute so if the user as well has uh, uses a screen read, uh, reader, so this is very um, helpful. Uh, it will provide an alt attributes as well. So on our end, um, I'm gonna give it a um, an alt attribute for let's say uh, cute dogs. Let's close it. So if we can save this, as you can see, it's very big. Uh, we can uh, resize this uh, by using a a width a of let's say 400, 404, and for the height is uh, let's say 290. Okay, as you can as you can see, it's resized uh, automatically. Okay. We can also make a uh, dead links uh, using the hash symbol. Okay, so by doing so, uh, you know, all you need to do is let's create another break line. So let's say we have an A uh, link or anchor tag. Let's say, for example, let's call it, it's a dead link okay the reason we're doing this because sometimes uh, we uh, already knew if uh, what links or what website that we're going to 
include on the href attribute so we can also put this and uh, include this uh, a, a dead link all right so by typing in a hash symbol sometimes you want to add some element as well uh, of the websites before you know uh, where they will the link so I think uh, using the hash symbols very uh, helpful all right so we can also turn an image into a link let's say for example this image right here we can turn that into a link so once you click the image you can directly uh, go to the uh, specified um, uh, websites all right so by doing so uh, you can create an anchor tag as well again href let's create the, the uh, let's create a dead link and inside of that uh, we can provide uh, an IMG tag on between of the uh, opening and closing of the A element say IMG and then let's create a source so I already have a source image okay and uh, you can create an alt attribute as well let's say we have two cute little dogs okay so you can name this um, any name you want let's say my best friend As you can see, we have now a an image link. So it's a uh, sleeping dogs. So once you click this, it will um, direct direct you to the uh, any link or any website you provided in this link. Let's say, for example, you link this image to let's say, for example, Google.com again. So once you click this, it will direct you to the google.com websites. Okay, so that's how you create a, an image into a link. And also there's two type of uh, source or the uh, links uh, attribute or links that we can use to the source. Uh, number one is the absolute uh, URL which is uh, you can get the image from external or hosted to another website and for relative url is the one that we are using at, th at this point which is this file cute.jpg okay so that's the uh, some of the pointers that you need to to remember and uh, absolute url again and relative url is uh, different so let's try to create now a list so at least we got a three different types of lists the, the unordered and the ordered list okay so let's type in a list comments here and let's try a create a ul which is unordered unordered list by the way are used to mark up a list of items so it should be in between of this tag and so every unordered list starts with uh, a ul tag okay elements so it should be a wraps around these elements like bullet list let's say for example we want some five list elements so i'm gonna type in li uh, let's copy this let's say four times and let's say we want a say for example earth mars and jupiter saturn and pluto if we save this as you can see we have some bullet lists of lists so our lists are lists which is ordered by or item does matter so the mar this markup structure is the same for um, ordered lists that we need to we're going to create later okay let's 
try to create an order list. So I'm going to copy this and I'm going to change this to order list. Let's say change this to say fish, say uh, meat, say uh, vegetables, say fruits, say bread. So if we save this, see we have a uh, numbered, say one, two, three, four, five, and and the text as well. All right. So that's how you create a list or ordered list. Plus, uh, we can also create an emphasis for for each demo. So uh, emphasis. Let's say. Let's say you want to add an emphasis in in the sentences, right? So we stress a certain words, like you know, we tend to stray words by putting them like italics. So on HTML, you can create that. Uh, let's say we have a paragraph. Let's say uh, I want, and then uh, you can add an em. Uh, elements so by wrapping this text let's say i want candy and you bought let's say we add again in em or emphasis say online say online so if you could check that on the on the web page you say Let's see, you can see the, the candy is emphasis, right? Just like an italic tag. So that's how you uh, create a uh, an emphasis tag. And also there is a strong or important one, so bold. So uh, by doing that, let's say uh, strong, and then let's say we have a paragraph. Let's say uh, this, let's say this bread is Say type in strong. Say this spread is um, highly recommended. So once we save this, uh, we as you can see we have this bread is highly rec uh, recommended. Okay. All right. So that's how you create a um, um, emphasis tag by you can wrap inside of the paragraph tag and also the uh, strong element so it will give the text uh, bold uh, effects i think yep it's bold effects all right so next we're going to create a text field so this one is uh, the most common use to uh, create a form elements so text fields inputs a some elements that are convenient way to get input from the user just like a form tag uh, we just like facebook once you log in so that is an input tag so we can create uh, a text input like this so first let's create a comment right here so let's create an input text okay let's create a break line so by creating an input just like other element you can um, add an attribute type let's say text because we want text if we save that we as you can see we have a text field right here you can type in any time you any any numbers or any letters you want and also we can uh, create additional placeholder so we can uh, in input a placeholder uh, placeholder inside of this input okay so by doing this is we can uh, do that by let's say well we have an input and oops let's say we have an input here and let's say we have type of say text and we can create a placeholder attribute so you can name this any placeholder you want let's say this is a placeholder 
save that. As you can see, we have a placeholder inside of that uh, text input. All right, so next I think we can create a form. So let's say form comments. By creating a form, we can create a form element and inside of the form element, we can create a, we can wrap this by um, the input and the label tag. By the way, the label is used to create caption for a form control. And uh, this label uh, tag can be associated with a form control as well. So it is good for the screen readers. So let's say, for example, we have a label, uh, label tag. Let's say we're going to name this as a first name. And we can provide a, let's say, for, uh, let's say, first name. We can first name explicitly. We can put a column here. And let's add a line break. And we can create an input tag. <clears throat> and we can type, let's say, text. And we can provide this an ID for, let's say, first name. So the ID and the for attribute should be, should be the same. And the name as well, first name. Let's say first name. Okay, let's create a line break as well. Stay organized. Oops, can type. So once we save this, as you can see, we have now a first name. So we can copy this, by the way. And we can change this to last name. Okay. All right, so this is how we create form, okay? And uh, form element is used to collect user input. So you can, you know, uh, build web forms that um, actually submit data to a server using pure HTML. So you can do this by specifying this, uh, this action attribute on your form element, just only HTML. And next, we can also create a radio button form. So we can create by doing same as above when we create a text input. And in this uh, type, uh, we need to uh, include the uh, type radio instead of text. And uh, we can provide an ID for that, let's say mail and the name for that, let's say uh, gender. And we can provide a value, which is, let's say male. Okay. So uh, below that, we can create a, let's say a label. And we can also create, let's say type, type of, let's say male. And we can name this mail. So once we save this, we have a mail. Let's create a um, line break. And for that, we can also copy this one. Okay, so in this section, we can provide this a changes to female. And for the label is still female, this changes to female. So we have male and female uh, radio button. Okay, so that's how you create a uh, radio button form. And also you can add a uh, additional for the, for the input. Let's say for example, you want say other. Okay, so radio button ID, let's say other. 
and the name is let's say other value for other okay and for the label uh, we can create this is say type label for change this for uh, let's say other change this to other okay so we have three uh, radio button form now okay next we can also create a uh, checks checkbox uh, button form so it's very similar for those two create a form then let's uh, input a type which is different for now which is we can provide checkbox let's say for ID for let's say uh, vehicle number one and provide the name of uh, vehicle number one and for the value which is let's say bike and for the label we can create a let's say label for vehicle one and let's just say i have a bike let's create a line break here okay so for for the input as well uh, we can create another um, input we can copy this and for the input we can have we have a let's say vehicle 2 say vehicle 2 let's say the, va the value for the car let's say I have say have a car okay and uh, we can add a line break stay organized and we can copy this for for the last one let's say change this for vehicle number three vehicle number three say we have a boat say i have a boat oops and Create a line break. There you go. So as you can see, we have a check mark form here. Okay, and now we can have add additional a uh, submit button for for our form input elements right here. Let's say we want to let's say an input. Let's say add a type of submit and let's give it a value of submit okay so once we save that we have a submit button right here without any styling all right and submit button is used to uh, define or uh, for submitting data to the a form handler uh, button will send some you know some data from the URL you specified with your form actions um, attribute and for HTML5 we have some additional attribute which is required for the form let's say for our first and last name um, for example sometimes on our uh, website we visited you forgot to um, include your let's say on my end the last name once you hit submit it will give you a notification let's say please uh, fill out this field okay and let's say you forgot a the, the first name let's say for this is let's say Santos and you need to fill out the first name okay so that's the uh, required um, attribute or additional attribute to the HTML form. Okay. And this attribute for um, this require uh, 
specifically these form fields you need to you know to include the the value that you need to input so uh, the user will not be able to submit the form until the uh, he or she has filled them out okay and next I think we have we can add a some you know div so div is used for uh, to nest many elements with a single div element so uh, it's used to group content so it can be easily styling uh, using the the class or ID attributes so let's give you an example for that let's say create a div let's say I'm going to create an h3 um, uh, heading here let's say this is a heading level 3 and we have a p tag here say this is a paragraph okay so now we can copy this okay so this div is inside of this div we have two elements which is uh, these two element is the children of this div which is the container so the good thing about div is we, you can easily group content and it's very helpful when you are styling uh, this, comp uh, this component or this, this element. Let's say for example we can add a class here or you can add an ID so if you want to style this specific or particular element. And you can style this by using inline styling. Let's say we have a style here. Uh, we can provide a border. Let's say that border. Let's say we can provide a color. Let's say color blue. As you can see, these two children uh, became co color blue. We can we can do this on the other element as well. You can style. Let's say. Um, can change the font size and say uh, 20 pixels which changed to 20 pixels okay so that's the good thing about uh, the div it's very widely used uh, when it comes to styling uh, the web pages <coughs> because uh, for for this separation of the nesting of the elements Okay, so let me show you again the uh, um, link to internal sections of the page uh, using the anchor elements. So it will uh, create a link you assign and uh, these links have a href attribute or you can put an hash uh, symbol plus the value of the ID attribute for the element that you want to internally link to. So usually further down the page, let's say for example, you want, you want to go to the footer sections. Once you click this element, you will go to the uh, footer sections of the page. So that's very easy using the uh, ID tag. Let's say I have a footer here. So I provided a footer ID Let's say, for example, this one is for the element. There you go. Um, all we need to do is to uh, create a footer href. So once you click that, you will go to the footer. Uh, you can use this to, let's say you have a navigation page uh, on your website. Let's say you have a home about uh, works contact page. And once you click those links, uh, you will go to the specific sections of your website. So I think that's very helpful. And 
I think that's it. So for for this video, and well, I'm going to create a, a another video so oh, we can style this web page and by using CSS, and that's for another topics. And so I think I hope you enjoy and you learn something on this video, even though it's not uh, technically smooth for for my presentations so uh, i'm gonna do my best on my next video so uh, hopefully you enjoy this and if you have any questions or suggestions so just please comment on the uh, comment sections below uh, you can find me on twitter uh, github and also in this youtube channel so thank you guys and see you on my next video bye bye